Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Do you want to become insanely successful? Do you want to be the go-to guru in your industry? Do you want to be talked about for all the right reasons? For over 40 years, Kevin Harrington has helped people just like you become significant influencers. Now he's broken the process down in the key person of influence roadmap, and it's yours for free. Just text KPI to him at 727-888-2100. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free step-by-step guide. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 to get the recognition you deserve and experience the success as the go-to voice everyone listens to in your industry today. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. With me, as always, is the inventor of the infomercial and the original shark on the hit TV show, Shark Tank, Kevin Harrington. Kevin, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Seth. Great to be here. I'm looking forward to today. I know we got a very special guest, so... uh... Let's, let's, let's do it. We do. Today we are joined by Jarek Robbins. He is a best-selling author. Fast Company calls him inspiring. Forbes says he'll teach you how to succeed. Deepak Chopra will advise you to go to Jarek to help create meaning and fulfillment in your life. Brian Tracy applauds his ability to teach people how to develop meaning and purpose in life and then make a difference in the lives of others. If you are looking for ways to level up in life and business, Jarek is your guy. Let's get started. Jarek, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, I got to say that was the best introduction I've ever had. It's almost <laughs> like I wrote it myself, not going to lie. It's strong. Crazy how that works. <laughs> All right, so let's go back in time a little bit. Obviously, you've done incredible work and achieved incredible success with your clients in your own business, getting recognized for that. How did you get started? Sure. Um, so I got started 11 years ago on my own. I decided that I wanted to build my own coaching practice, which I've heard many people are trying to do today. Uh, I did what most people do, which is get one to three clients a month. And, and you know, I was pittering along or puttering along and doing, doing fine. Uh, I formed a partnership, which is something we should probably chat about. It's, it's really smart. Formed a partnership with a lady in LA. Um, there were three key pieces of that partnership that worked really well. And I went from one to three clients a month to signing up 20 clients in a day. We did over 800,000 in revenue within 16 months of working together from three different events. Uh, and, and things took off rather nicely from the beginning. And, and it was very neat. It was that partnership that helped kind of us get lift and move into a community. And it, it was really remarkable what that did for me. Since then, um, yeah, everything between speaking at events around the world, uh, a big focus in the beginning was trying to reach millions of people and make millions of dollars and make you know, a huge difference. Somewhere along the road, I remember getting a, a, a letter from a airman who had been deployed overseas. She came home and she said, Hey, I had horrible PTSD. Last seven days, I had my firearm in my mouth wanting to pull the trigger. Someone gave me a copy of your book. I read it and reminded me of my reason why I want to keep living. Thank you. For wow. That. And at that moment, I changed from trying to reach millions and make millions and do all this jazz to just reach the people each per- each day that needs us most at the moment they need it with the message they need. And what's wild is when that trajectory changed to going after reaching that one person each day, all of a sudden, we have clients now in 113 countries around the world actively learning with us. We have tens of thousands of people seeking out our programs and doing them all over the world. And it's really a blessing. But it was funny when I was hungry for that, it didn't seem to happen. And as soon as I got hungry for doing the right stuff, all of a sudden it opened up and it really worked. So, Jarek, that's great. Great story. Love it. Um, just trying to understand also your specific kind of um, expertise or when, when, when you're looking to coach a new client, um, wh- where do you start and what, what level uh, are, are, are you ha- starting with with these folks in, in terms of their, their, their business or their personal lives? Sure. Mostly 35 to 45-year-old male entrepreneurs and business owners is my sweet spot. Seth and I talked about this before. Um, on, on the prevention side, we help prevent a heart attack, divorce, and bankruptcy. Those are kind of the three killers of that stage and age of life. People work so hard, they come home and there's someone sitting at the table with a stack of paper saying, I don't want in this anymore. 
that nearly gives them a heart attack in that moment because uh, they didn't see it coming. They say, man, I was a day too late. That's why this person wants a divorce. Usually they were a year too late and they didn't see the right signals that were happening. Um, going through that divorce process racks up their mind, keeps them completely distracted from their business. Oftentimes their business will take a tumble, finances get tight and they possibly lose everything and go bankrupt in that period of time. And in this time they lose themselves. They stop working out. They start taking care of themselves health wise, mentally, emotionally, physically, and heart attacks nearly around the corner. Those are the preventative things we do on the flip side. Um, we take startups and who, you know, have a solid team, solid product, have a little bit of momentum going. And we've helped our startups raise over $500 million over the last probably six, seven years in working with them. It's amazing startup teams. We helped them scale from 20 employees to 180 employees in the process and really figure out how to get the right foundation set. Um, once they pass a hundred million a year in mark, they're kind of out of my range. So we let them go to other consultants at that point. But when they're in the five to 50 plus employees, they're under a hundred million in revenue then they tend to be my sweet spot where I can work really well with them very nicely. Uh, Seth said, my relationship good is good. My health is great. My business is fine. Do I need you? And I said, well, <laughs> do you think you could be better? Uh, you know, when's the last time if you were flying a plane, you kind of want an altimeter that tells you at what height your plane is flying. If you're flying a crop duster, you don't really need one. You just look down and make sure you're off the ground. If you're flying a fighter jet, you're going to need an altimeter because you're going really fast. And if you make a oops, you're going to hit the ground and blow up. And so I always ask in your relationship, when's the last time you sat down with your significant other and put a zero to 10 of how well you're doing in every category of your relationship. And that's your altimeter. And the part that really hurts for most men, for some reason, is we give ourselves an eight and say, things are solid. And then we get our spouse's response back and they give us a two and a half. And our, our, we go, yeah. what? What do you mean? I thought I was doing great. Where am I? Where am I failing? And they're like, well, I just didn't want to say anything that hurt your feelings. And so that calibration period, I always call Olympic training camp. We take in, put you on the track. And instead of you telling me how good things are, I get a stopwatch and you run and I track how fast you're really doing in every category of your life. And once we get a baseline number on how well your business numbers are doing, how well your relationship's doing, how well your health is, you know, what kind of sleep you're getting, how well you can clear your mind. I always tell people, if you're a grown man and you can't clear your mind for 10 minutes every morning, my goodness, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting shit done throughout the day. And Amazing. most have trouble with that. Amazing. So, so, so you, you work on not just the business side. I love $500 million in cash <laughs> raised. That's fantastic. But you're also helping the individual at the same time. So. so my specialty is the individual. That's where I have the most talent. Second up, I'd say relationship, third business. Business is a newer thing. It's about six years in, 11 and a half years into relationship stuff. Um, I've been working on my personal PhD in that category for a very long time now, 11 and a half years. And then the, the fitness and performance of the human side, that, that's a lifelong study. That's since I was 14 years old. So that one, and the fun part is we have all these gadgets nowadays so I, I can track how well you can clear your mind every morning by sending you a little device and have you meditate with it each morning. And I get a dashboard on my side that shows me how well you were able to clear your mind for 10 minutes in the morning each day. I can, you know, get a little tracker on your wrist or ankle and I could see how well you were able to sleep last night and how well your nervous system based on your heart rate variability, how well your body actually recovered last night. Cause you might get great sleep. Like, Oh, I got seven and a half hours of rock solid sleep. And your nervous system says you're completely caught up in a sympathetic mode, which means you're go, 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 go wired, which means your nervous system didn't recover. That's fine for a couple of days. If you, if you live that way, it's going to burn out your adrenals and you're going to be that race car that didn't pit. And if you look at a racetrack, if the, the strategy to win the Indy 500 is just never take a pit stop, you, you realize pretty quickly it's a dumb idea. Tires burn off, engine blows up, and you burn out. You burn out of gas. <laughs> business owners all the time. Go ahead, Seth. Okay, so you you talked about uh, the cash raised. You talked about the woman who decided not to kill herself. You reminded her of her purpose. Can you give us some examples of business owners that you've worked with and the transformation both on the personal and the business side that has happened without, you don't have to name any names, but just kind of like the con conceptually? Sure. So I was working with a guy who used to train the snipers for the Navy SEALs. Um, he got out of uh, training snipers for SEALs, went into business in San Diego, 
failed miserably. He says that. I'm not judging him whatsoever. It just didn't work. Um, got into a different business, moved to New York City, launched it, got it pretty big. Uh, he picked me up when he was going between, you know, let's say seven to 10 million and getting up over 20 million a year. That's when we met. And a lot of the work we did was on stuff he was aware of. I've learned this is very important. It's not a knowledge gap with the people I work with. I'm not teaching them something they don't know. I'm the person measuring the pulse of what's going on and nudging them when they know it could be better. And so for him, he's the one who taught me about, you know, if, if a business owner is not laser focused yet aware of the chaos, it's like a sniper. If you're not laser focused down range, you're not going to hit the target. You're useless to the team. If you're not aware of the chaos around you, someone walks up behind you and shoots you. You're dead. You're not useful to the team. So how do you train your brain to do both? He's the one who taught me that philosophy. And I went, oh my God, we've been doing this with people for a long time. We use a device called Muse. It's a biofeedback device. You meditate with it on your forehead. And when you have thoughts in your head, it literally gives you thunderbolts and lightning storms to tell you you got a storm in your mind. And when you clear your thoughts, it gives you little chirping birds to tell you, hey, you've cleared the storm. And it teaches you, it, it trains your brain how to become laser focused with aware of the chaos. As we were able to get him to do that, he obviously knows about that. He trained freaking snipers for the Navy SEALs. He knows how to do it. As we got him to do it more often, his results tended to go up. He's now exited that company and made a lump sum of money, which is pretty cool. And he exited in a time when chaos was happening. So even better. And, and so, but in that process, we helped him stay focused. We helped him stay aware of the chaos. We helped him identify the dangers. I've learned in business, and I would ask your guys' opinion because you have a lot of experience here. The team with the better defense tends to win more often than the team with just an offense. And so with him, we spend a lot of time building defense. What are the things that could put him out of business, and how do we make sure those things don't happen? A friend of mine called this a pre-mortem, kind of like a post-mortem where you go to the autopsy center and they cut it open and say, okay, what happened? This is a pre-mortem. If there was six things that would put your business burning fire in a dumpster six months from now, what are those six things and how do we make sure they don't happen? Productive paranoia. That's right. And so we sat with him and I helped him focus on what could these six things be and how do we make sure these things don't happen? What kind of defense we got put in place to make sure these things do not swipe the legs out from underneath what we're doing here. And we got to look at that. We got to look at that in his health. What are the things that could take you out? You know, there, there's a virus, there's a pandemic going on right now around the world. How do we make sure that doesn't take you out right now? It'd be, it'd be a pretty bad thing if you're in the middle of doing a fundraise and all of a sudden the pandemic strikes. You're like, oh, crap. Now that's an mm -hmm. unexpected mm -hmm. one. How yeah. do we make sure it doesn't jack up your funds? How do we make sure it doesn't cost you your entire fundraise right now? How do we make sure it doesn't crush your sales team? I, I keep seeing these memes where it's a boxer getting punched really hard in the face and uh, the, the boxer is labeled the sales guy and the boxing glove smashing him is labeled, we're just holding our funds right now. We'll let you know when we're ready to invest. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I started laughing. I said, okay, all that means is the buyer doesn't see enough value to pull the trigger right now. That's it. If yeah. the buyer saw enough value, they'd, they'd pull the trigger immediately. And so the question we'd ask, what would you have to offer value-wise that it would be insane to walk away from? And we're, we, we had that conversation on a webinar the other day. It isn't that people aren't spending. It's that you have to make the case in an irresistible right. way That's using, right. you know, Kevin's 10 step formula to the perfect pitch to get them to go. I have to do this because of the pandemic or despite the pandemic, not because of the pandemic, I can't do it. That's right. Get an That's irresistible right. offer. That's it. That, that's it. That's great. Hey, hey Jared, so you, it sounds like you've got so much experience here now for the 11 plus years you've been doing this. You solve people's problems, but you also, you're helping them raise capital. Of course, that may have been a problem. They, they needed money. But let's talk about business expansion, business uh, development, b sure. brand building. Do you, do you help? If, if an entrepreneur comes to you and is looking for advice to, you know, to elevate themselves in the marketplace... Do, do you have a, a brand building um, consultation kind of uh, thing that you, you, you give people? Brand building? No, we, we refer them out for that. That's not our specialty. 
Um, business building, yeah, like how do we get their business to grow? We tend to work with more brick and mortars in this case. And what we tend to look for is, uh, one of my friends put it really nicely in one of his books. And I'm forgetting the exact words he used, but he said there's five C's. Uh, you know, the one is how many can you, how many people can you capture? Meaning if you look out in the marketplace, how many people can you capture their attention? Can you get them to come say hello? Can you get them to just know that you exist? Uh, number two, how many can you convert? How many of those can you actually convert in the paying clients? You know, the, the next one is, I think it was continuity how, how, or uh, price. I forget the C he used for that, but cash? basically cash or <laughs> capital, how much do each one of those people pay on average? Uh, continuity, how long do they stick around? And then referrals, how many people do they bring with them? And if we just took those numbers and we sat down with any business and we plugged in where they're currently at, then a lot of my work is asking the right question, which is, okay, you currently get a million people a month to read your blog. That's awesome. But you only get two people to convert into a paying client. That sucks. What can we do to make that ratio a little better this month? And that's it. And we pause right there. We let them do the thinking. And we let them solve it. We let them come up with the ideas. Right. And, and so I'm not necessarily an educational business. I'm not teaching them how to do this, but I'm, I'm giving them the right place to look and I'm asking them the right question, then I'm asking them to put in the work. And every now and then I'll get a, I don't know, I've tried everything. And I'm sure if you've worked with people who've said that phrase before and you know it ain't true, and you go, really? Have you tried this? And you give them one simple idea and they go, you're brilliant. And they're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> you just allowed your brain to stop working when you gave it the easy out of, I've tried everything. No, you haven't. Otherwise you'd have the result. So if you don't have the result, you haven't tried everything, let's come up with a few more ideas. And if we can get into the ideation phrase where we help them stir up those good ideas, we can figure out tactical things they can try. But we try to stay on the strategic level where we help them point the flashlight where they need some help. We help them figure out ideation and solutions of what could solve it. Then we help them figure out what order they think has the best odds. There's a great book by Annie Duke called Thinking in Bets. Um, you know, which of these has the best odds? Are you picking the one that has a 50-50 chance of working? Are you picking the one that has a 90-10 chance of working or the one that has a 10-90 chance of work? You know, one might sound sexy, but it has 10% odds of working. Sounds like a stupid idea. So let's try the one that has a 90% chance of working uh, first. It makes a little more sense. And it's not as sexy. It's not as fun. But by God, if it works, you fall in the Warren Buffett. His, his investment strategy is not sexy. It's not fun. It's boring as all can be. And that dude's got $128 billion in cash right now when a lot of people are trying to figure out how to pay their rent. I think I'd pay attention to his strategy at this point when most people are scrambling. You give advice every day to entrepreneurs and their companies. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? You don't have to have all the answers. It's not your job. And so a, a lot of time with advice, we help people. We certainly help people. In the advice category, what I've learned is it's really, really, really important to learn how to ask better questions than to dish out better advice. And so, you know, when we can ask someone and they say, oh, here's my offer. What do you think I can do to beef it up? A, I'd turn to someone like Kevin and say, hey, you have a lot more experience in this. Can you help this guy know what to do here? <laughs> I have not had all the years of putting offers together. I have not built infomercials and all this amazing stuff. Therefore, I would send them to someone who has all that experience and say, hey, go work with the pro here. Let that person help you figure out what to do in this scenario or how to beef it up. My job is to ask you the question, how come there's only two people out of a million converting and paying you? That, that's, that's not a good number. How come? What would we have to do to make this irresistible? What's the offer you'd have to make to these people that they'd immediately quit working with your competitor and immediately start working with you instead? And if I can ask them the right question, I can get them to think about it and I can get them to stir up the right answers. My God, they know more about their business than I do, but they can find the right answer that all of a sudden makes them magnetic in their own marketplace. And a lot of times it's because they haven't taken time to actually think They've been so busy just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. They haven't sat down and answered some of the questions that make it pretty obvious once you spend time thinking about it. Beautiful. It, so I like how you, you say, if you don't have to have the answer, refer it out or send it. Like 
I use the term dream team. I have a dream team of experts yep. that I can just refer people out to that are, you know, there's a, a franchising guru that I know on franchising and digital marketing, it's, et cetera. You talk, you don't do brand building. There are some great people that do. So yep. um, gr great, uh, great philosophy to- yeah. uh, And the partnership is the key. I learned this from a friend of mine in Tampa, actually. He, he said it best. I was like, oh, that's so important. He said there was three parts of a partnership that makes so much sense. Um, you know, reach, someone who has a, a, a connection with an audience or reach. Second, uh, relationship, that know, like, and trust connection. And then third, that world-class product or service. And the combination of the three, going back to the beginning where we started, that's what caused us to make that $800,000 in, in the 16 months. Um, and that was a lot of money. I was 24 years old. My overhead was two grand a month. So to generate $800,000 is like rain of cash falling all over me. <laughs> 24, that's like, oh my God, look at all this. I'm rich. And, and that's a lot for 24 years old. At least it was for me at that time in life. And so that concept though, what happened was my partner had a list of 10,000 small business owners, specifically in Los Angeles County, specifically that did not have an online presence. She had a very targeted list of 10,000 of these people. Second, uh, we went and built a relationship with them. We did free events. We did preview events where we previewed what we were doing and showed people what was going on and they loved it. And we made sure that they rocked their world in those previews. And then third, we, we did something that was special that I didn't realize until just recently. I met a guy from the Australia part of the world that showed me something I never knew. Um, he, he, just, he told me most of us build a product and then go try to sell it to people. He said, instead, if you took your person you want to work with, you stuck them right in the middle and you drew the whole diagram around them. And you said, what are the three things I can solve for this person better than anyone in the world? And if you built everything to solve their problems and they're the most important part of this puzzle, not you, all of a sudden, when you go talk to them, they stand up and be like, man, how long have you been following me? I literally had someone say that to me. I, I, I did a pitch one time and I stood up and I said, hey, I help 35 to 45 year old male business owners and entrepreneurs, zero to, zero to three kids, five to 50 plus employees, usually take net net after tax, $500,000 a year. I help them avoid a heart attack, divorce and bankruptcy. We help them not learn new things, but stay accountable to the little things that make them the happiest, healthiest, strongest, most fulfilled version of themselves. And we do that really simple through using some new technology that helps us track all their data each day. I had a guy at the other side of the table yell out, excuse, I won't cuss, but he cussed. He says, is this an effing intervention? How long have you been following me and who paid you to be here? And I started <laughs> laughing. Like, I don't even know your name, but clearly we need to talk. <laughs> and I was like, that's because he's the dude that fit right in between the three circles I built. Those were the three things coming up in his life. And when I said it out loud, he thought I had been following him and he thought his ex-wife paid me to go after him in this meeting <laughs> to try to fix him. Right. And he's like, tell her I'm not doing anything different. She can F off. And I was <laughs> like, I don't even know who this lady is, but clearly I struck a nerve. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and I was like, but that's, you know, you're the pitch guy. Like that's the kind of response you want when you make oh. a pitch somewhere. Yeah, You yeah. want someone feeling like you're the creepy person who's been, no, not creepy, but you want them <laughs> to feel like you're the person who somehow knows them better than they know themselves. And, yeah. you know, and, and we had a discussion. He's like, of course I want to work with you. How does this shit work? Like, tell me the details. I need this, obviously. Uh, and everyone in the room was laughing. And then one by one, people around the table did the same thing over that weekend where someone would pull me aside and say, hey, you know, how does it work? Can I, how, can I work with you? Like, how do you do this? And so I'm like, that's, the, that's what happened. That's what should happen. When you make an of offer, perfect pitch. absolutely. Yeah. Well, and Jared, I think we know people miss that piece. We know your time is incredibly oh. valuable. We greatly appreciate you spending it with us. For our viewers and listeners who are interested in learning more about what you do, where is the best place for us to send them? Um, if they're a small business owner, go to jerickrobbins.com forward slash SOS. We have a really cool free training I'm teaching every Friday for helping small business owners survive this chaos. Uh, if they're not a small business owner, tell them to come find me on Instagram, just at Jarek Robbins. And I push out good motivational, positive thoughts every day to help people, you know, stay focused, stay inspired and stay their best self. Awesome. This has been Seth Green with Kevin Harrington and Jarek Robbins. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching or listening. And we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye, Jarek. Take care. Thanks, guys.
Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.